so uh, yeah, uh, I think still I was talking to Sivar Anjani. Yes, better. Yeah. Yeah, sure, Anjani. So, yeah, now you could proceed further. I was asking some question to you. You wanted to know that, uh, mm -hmm. you know, uh, what are the things you are already knowing? So, I was just okay. checking, you know, your okay. existing knowledge, yeah, into okay. ECC. So, you mm -hmm. said that you said that uh, the uh, you had been involved into GL accounting, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, I was asking that, while mm. creation of GL master data. Okay. Mm. So mm. GL master data uh, will come across in control data. Under control data, there's a, a field called sort key. Mm. Yeah. This is for what exactly? Okay. Mm. Any idea? Sort key. I don't have any idea about sort key. I didn't came across this. Mm -hmm. What about reconciliation account? Um, no, not about this also. No. Okay. Or uh, what about field It's statement? like. Uh, it's like a general ledger, like account receivable, payable. Uh, no, still we are talking about GL master data. Okay. Hmm. What about field status groups? Field status groups, no. No, I didn't came across this also. Okay, okay. I, I think I'm going a bit more in depth. Okay, leave that. Just to okay. tell me. When we are creating GL master data, so what are the different ways to create GL master data? Once again. Um, actually, I just want to go through. It become one year for me. So like, uh, I just want to go through all those things. This one is all new for, I mean, this all things are new, I think. So I didn't came across those things. Okay. What is the TR number? No, not, not. TR, 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 TR stands for transport request. Transport when, request. Whenever, whenever we are starting anything in configuration, the first time itself, the TR is needed. Any configuration, if you do, TR is needed. Hmm. Without TR, it cannot be done. Okay. Okay, uh, uh, Sirenjini, you tell me about the mm. servers. What what was the landscape when you worked in the city? Uh, I just worked in GUI. Uh, so it is like, uh, I think so this is different and that one is different, I don't know. Uh, because um, when I worked actually, it's a general normal only. So basic thing, we just want to, uh, like a financial year account, we want to just give the billing for the particular client. Huh? So uh, for example, uh, if I'm handling one account, like one client account, like if I'm handling like Costco account, so if they, they will be just renting like printers, accessories. So we just want to build those things, how much they are renting. And we just want to build those things, which is, it will be like a, uh, we use like general means we used only the IBR for those things. So for mm -hmm. like uh, for if the accessories means it will be like a mono color color proof. So those things will be there. We used to just build generally in the SAP like uh, we used only GUI. Uh, in general we used to build those things. So that's the thing we just did like monthly monthly like monthly monthly it will be the same process only. So if they ask like standalone, we used to give them. If there is any like, uh, if they want to, uh, uh, if they want any like uh, amount deduction, something else, we just used to provide that. So that's the thing. It's, it's all based on the client request. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So those things, what you said now, that is all new for me. I, I didn't even came across those things. That's why I'm just silent. I'm sorry for that. Mm -hmm. I, no I no problem, Mr. Ranjani, actually. Before the starting, 
any session, you know, for okay. anyone. I used to ask them where exactly they are standing. Otherwise, how okay. will I come to know that? <laughs> that yeah, 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 yeah. No, I, I, I understood. I understood that. That's why I'm just telling. This is the thing I did. All those. Um, we just generally the basic thing, just to, uh, normal monthly, monthly, it will be the same process only. Mm -hmm. So we will be having like few accounts. We will be like particular persons. They will be having like 15, 14 accounts. So based on the accounts, but everything, there will be like printers, accessories. So both, only the both things we used to be handling. So they will be renting those things. One company, like for example, like few companies, they will be renting some accessories like laptops, something from uh, private companies, right? So they will be renting those. So those billing will be done by SAP. Like they will be done using SAP. Mm -hmm. Will be billing automatically how much they got, all the, everything like one IBR. They will be having like common IBR for that. So whatever changes we will be used to done, we will be changing in that same IBR only. So we understood. won't need. Uh, yeah, you. I think so. You will. You. Yeah, got, got it. My got point. it. Understood. Yeah, yeah. Understood. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So Surajini, okay. this means you have worked okay. as an user, not as a consultant. Yeah. No. Mm, yeah. Mm. That was not consultant job. It was an user. I mean, consultant okay. is developer. Okay. 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 That's what I'm asking. The consultant means I thought like a consultant company. <laughs> no, 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 like no. Consultant, yeah. <laughs> consultant is not as a consultancy. <laughs> okay. Okay. That is, okay. So yeah. In in a SAP in a SAP terminology, whenever we okay. use to say I'm working as a consultant, so this mm -hmm. is at senior developer level. Oh, okay. Then. Yeah, consultant that, here, yeah. consultant is a very you know it is very big word. Uh, actually, <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> So directly, directly, everyone doesn't become consultant. First of all, mm -hmm. maybe uh, as an associate consultant or as a, mm -hmm. whenever, mm -hmm. if I say hierarchy, then like a associate okay. software engineer, then software engineer, then senior mm -hmm. software engineer, okay? Mm -hmm. Then uh, associate okay. consultant, uh, then consultant, mm -hmm. then senior consultant, mm -hmm. like that. This kind of hierarchy would be there for the developers. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My God. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, okay. so now I understood that, okay, yes, you have worked as a, an end user, not as a consultant. Mm -hmm. End user okay. means, end user mm -hmm. means suppose when SAP, when entire development is done, means entire mm -hmm. SAP implementation is done. So those mm -hmm. persons who are going to use SAP end of the day, they are called mm -hmm. end users. End users, okay. okay. So yeah. that will be for all the day-to-day -day activities related to business transactions. It mm -hmm. can be it can be billing also, it can be payment also, it can yeah. be you know, mm -hmm. reconciling the balances, it can be related to clearing. Yeah. So yeah, related to clearing. Yeah, there, right. there are there are multiple types of transactions on related mm -hmm. to activities. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So uh, uh, you know, those who are working as inducer, you will uh, if uh, sometimes if you see, you know, they, if they will be describing their profile, they will say, yes, I'm working into account receivable. Somebody will say, I'm mm -hmm. working into account payable. Somebody will mm -hmm. say, yeah, I'm working into GL accounting. So this means mm -hmm. this means they are working as inducer only, not as a consultant, not as a developer. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. 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 Yeah, I got it. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. uh, fine. Uh, then, as your engineer, it will be advisable. Okay. Mm -hmm. That. We will start, see, in, uh, uh, okay, let me tell you two things to all of mm. you. This is not, and mm. see, others also, it is not only, only civil engineer, it is for everyone, okay, who are in the call. So, what we will do, we will start from basic level, okay, and mm. we will go to till in-depth, okay? Okay, yeah, okay. See, uh, one is, I mean, this is see, ECC and S4 HANA. The names are different, but there is no too big a difference. In S4 HANA, obviously, a few things have been okay updated more. Okay. What we'll okay. do, we'll start from ECC because ECC talks from basics. Okay. Mm -hmm. Basics to in-depth. S4 HANA, not exactly from basics. Almost you could say that, you know, when whenever somebody is coming for S4 HANA, we used to think, okay, they are already having some knowledge into, you know, ECC. Are there mm -hmm. already there from SAP? Are they are working into SAP? So you, we used to leave 50%. Okay. 50% contents, we used to leave that. Thinking that, okay, already their basic idea is good. Okay. I mean, this will be like, you know, general thinking of anyone. Okay. okay. So here, what we'll do that we'll start from basics. Okay. And we'll go mm -hmm. to in depth. And parallelly, whatever changes are there, that also will be discussing into S4 HANA as well. Okay. So okay. on that way, 
neither any things should be left in basics nor into till in depth okay so okay. i mean you know you need to become a perfect consultant in the, the day mm -hmm. so not only you know this is a configuration or customization i mean not only consultant role even we are going to uh, include testing role also and individual activities as well i understand that okay i i hope you will be aware about the sap easy access because the transactions will be doing into sap easy access only billing and all these things all comes under mm, sap easy mm. access not into img in img all the configuration is there okay in sap there are two type of screens anyway let us i think we are going you know much more in depth so first we'll start right from beginning okay so okay. all right uh, suranjani i understood uh, okay uh, this is i mean uh, about your you know exposure and experience yeah this is what i wanted to you know uh, okay. understand so now i am I'm, i'm having clarity okay from where to start yeah. so yeah. obviously we have to start from basics only from beginning and yeah, sure, sure. step yeah. by step till in depth all right yeah okay mm -hmm. all right and then after that uh i'm sumitra ah uh, sumitra yeah please hi um uh, currently i'm actually in uh, germany mm -hmm. i worked for 14 years in uh, indian banks like in a hdfc canfin homes and into the housing loans as a credit manager 14 years one for 14 years yes. good very good mm -hmm. um um so my experience is a non it experience completely mm -hmm. okay so okay. i worked into the loan credit management where i have to approve the loans to the people it's a front end uh, banking experience what i have right. little bit of experience into the accounting of course mm -hmm. and the sales or whatever that uh, whatever the software we have in the system so we will just update into the system and then we will do the front end operations to the people to the customers okay, okay, okay. so now uh, i'm looking for the little bit of career change actually so i'm also looking for the um, sap training institutes here in germany but i thought from a, through my mutual friends i got uh, this contact number size contact number and um, yeah so i want to know about the basics because i have no idea what, how does this fi uh, sap fico starts because i because i have a 14 years of finance experience i decided okay i can do it under the financial management mm -hmm. and yes, yes. i'm sorry yeah i uh, good good to good to know yeah. so and when i am doing the research i have understood that there are some modules which are related to the credit risk management too mm -hmm. like a loan management or credit risk management accounting correct correct, correct. correct. so these are the options what i have seen so for me first i want to understand what is this sap module and what are the areas we are going to learn from this codes like um, right. are we going to uh, focus only on accounting or are we going to focus only on the credit risk or it is inclusive of all or uh, are we going to get the certificate from the like um, institute how exactly the training mm. goes and, i'll be, uh, i'll be telling you i'll be telling yeah. all uh, sumitra okay and uh, and the things that okay just as you talk about the career that you want to maintain you know, career into sap as well so it is just uh, to uh, you know uh, add some points in in your information that uh, if you are in german then there is a very good scope for sap because sap is from german itself okay mm -hmm. it is started from german only yes. so there are multiple requirements are there mm -hmm. okay. so if you are having some you know good knowledge and real knowledge i am telling you it don't take time to get into that Mm -hmm. okay not only in german almost it is see it is in every country everywhere globally sap is highly recommended in terms of maintaining the career yes okay. only one thing is that yes you need to have a good knowledge yeah when you are having good amount of knowledge and real knowledge okay hands on mm -hmm. okay on the system so uh, even you know if you are a beginner also if you are fresher also even mm -hmm. uh, you will not struggle for the job into sap and not only not only question of availability of the job even in terms of package also okay it, it is this is you know uh, sap consultants are being highest paid okay implies mm -hmm. compared mm -hmm. to other uh, uh, you know areas of the it first mm -hmm. of all it in it everyone knows okay this is a higher package there into it yeah. so in it also 
because SAP is a hardcore IT. Mm -hmm. okay. And the moment when I say it is a hardcore IT, so never think that, okay, IT is there, then perhaps only coding, programming or something would be there. Mm -hmm. No, not at all. Coding, programming okay. also is there, but it doesn't mean that, okay, whole SAP is equal to coding, not like that. Mm -hmm. In SAP, there are three types of areas, or three types of modules, you could say. Technical, mm -hmm. functional, and techno-functional. Okay. Okay. So the moment when I say functional, in functional, all kind of background persons are recommended. All are mm -hmm. welcomed. Mm -hmm. Okay. Even many, many persons from technical background, they're coming and maintaining their career into functional. Because in functional, there are more openings, more opportunities are there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Functional means it can be finance, it can be metal management, it can be production planning, plant and maintenance, sales and distribution, human resource, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay? or uh, quality management. Inventory management, travel management. There are many multiple modules are there. Okay, multiple okay. areas are there. The moment when I say modules, there's just an area. Okay. okay. Yeah. And into technical, like um, there are you know ABAP, ABAP, Basis, or uh, uh, SAP Fury, SAP Webdyne Pro, SAP Oops, etc. But all are either just related to uh, coding, programming, okay, mm -hmm. networking. Okay, are just maintaining of the server, authorizations, all are related to technical only. Okay. 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 And then coming to techno functional. So as by name itself, uh, uh, you know, it is explained that techno functional. So this means those persons who are coming from functional background, they are having some technical knowledge as well. Okay. They can go for techno functional modules. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. I think we can just start it. Before starting, let me introduce myself as well. See, myself, Binod, and uh, having uh, around 20 years of experience into SAP. Okay. Okay. I'm into SAP FICO, uh, SAP S4 HANA, SAP MM, SAP SD as well. And uh, I'm having some technical knowledge also related to SAP ABAP. So, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, I started my career almost uh, 20 years back, but uh, uh, not as a consultant, even in training also, uh, same uh, amount of experience I'm having because along with my job, I'll, almost always I have been engaged in you know, taking classes as well, but it is just out of my office time. So either in, in weekend or into weekdays, but after office hours. Okay. So okay. yeah, in training also, this is good experience I'm having. Okay. And uh, coming to qualification, I have done MBA finance twice two times mm -hmm. that again quite long back okay i mean before starting off my career i did and uh, coming to certification so i'm having 12, 12 certifications okay two times i have done the certification directly from sap german mm -hmm. yeah. and uh, even sometimes uh, I, I remember sumitra you were talking about the certification how to do it so mm -hmm. no is i'll be telling you obviously certificate you'll be getting uh, you know, uh, from institute side, and even if you want to become global certified consultant, that also I can tell you the best way how to get it. Okay, so uh, uh, all this you know knowledge I'll be sharing with you people. Okay. Okay. And uh, let us proceed further. So I'll be you know coming to this screen later. First of all, we can start from initial. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just I'll show you the SAP screen first and we'll discuss later on this. Uh, so, Ranjini, I hope uh, the screen should have seen like this. When you yeah, yeah. Mm, yeah, yeah. Same thing. Yeah. Okay. And uh, if a standard transaction code you would have used, then these are the T codes you have used. Mm -hmm. Like VF01. Yeah, yeah. VF01. Yeah. 02, zero, 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 yeah. All this. Right? Yeah, yeah. That's true. Yeah. Okay. 
So uh, anyway, uh, instead of going inside that, first of all, we'll start from beginning because SAP is like OSIN. If I will take one concept, one screen, so we'll be spending two to three hours also, it is not going to be in depth. Okay. So let us start right from beginning. <coughs> SAP stands for systems. System application product in data processing. Yes, very good. Systems applications and products. Products. In data, in data processing. processing. Yeah. And it was launched in 1972. No, 72. 72. Yeah, 72. 1972 by five ex IBM engineers in German. Mm. Yeah. These engineers were Diet Marco, Asso Platner. Laustasira, Klaus Valenjuther, and Hans Werner Hector. These five members were there who introduced SAP in 1972. Yeah. And at that time, it was R1. It was known as R1. R1. Okay. What is R1? R1 stands for release one. So then after that it became R2, then R3, then ECC came. Okay, these things I will explain you later. So I think you know uh, instead of going for history or more technical, let us discuss how uh, scope of SAP scope of SAP, benefits of SAP, yeah, and uh, why we are using, okay, and uh, uh, not only that, even growth, how long it is going to be there, because, you know, before starting, there are multiple questions, okay, so let us discuss about that, and then again, we'll come back to the history of SAP, okay, okay. okay. See, because this is you know very true that before starting something we should know what is that right mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. so first we'll discuss the scope and benefits of sap so i'll be mentioning certain points over here one second user friendly this is very user friendly software okay why we are calling it user friendly that we'll discuss after this okay let me mention all the points data accuracy data storage connectivity Integration, innovation, safety and security, and it is there into cloud as well. Automation. So these are the briefly you know, points you know, which I just have entered. Otherwise, there are multiple other benefits as well. 
Okay, but yes, these are very common and major benefits. Okay, and easily understandable. Okay, easily we can you know, discuss many points into this. So obviously, as you people know, SAP is an ERP package. Okay. Uh, but there are many other packages as well, are many other software also under ERP. Okay. But here I will say that SAP is considered the best one and uh, quite biggest software okay. under ERP throughout the globe. It is accepted throughout the globe. Why it is yes. accepted? Uh, sorry, any questions there? No, no. Not okay. So why it is accepted? What is the reason behind that? Why we are talking too much about that? Why many companies are looking for SAP? And why companies are moving towards SAP and leaving their existing software? Many examples I can tell you people that uh, there are you know, other softwares like Oracle, JDWord, MMG, et cetera. Those companies who are using them, now they are moving into SAP. So what is the reason behind that? Obviously some extra benefit would SAP would be having compared to other softwares, that's why they are moving. Yeah, let us discuss. So see, to, first point is I have written user-friendly. This is user-friendly software, okay? Means in the sense, why it is user-friendly? Because uh, it's not like that, okay, it is some C, C++, Java, .NET, etc. That to work into that, okay, we have to go and learn that, you know, technical things are programming or coding something. Okay, it's not like that. Directly we can work into SAP. Yes, before that we need to understand the functionality of that. We need to just understand how to, uh, you know, how to navigate the things. We need to understand the, you know, uh, certain transaction codes, the way of working, those things only. But uh, it's not like that, okay, some couple of months training is needed for some other area, then only you'll be fit for SAP, not like this. Okay, directly we can learn SAP. And one more thing is there, why it is user friendly? Because uh, suppose some particular screen we are getting. Into that, obviously there would be some standard options would be available. Standard functionality would be there. Maybe that is not completely fit for the business or for the user who is doing all the activities on day to day basis. A couple of more options they need, couple of more fields are required, but this is not inbuilt. So what to do for that? Obviously some customization is needed, right? So SAP is ready and SAP is, you know, I mean, completely flexible to be customized. Okay, if some field is not available, some particular field is, uh, you know, missing in their standard system, in their standard software, in the, into their standard screen, then yes, we have full authorization to go for customization. We can make the system, we can make the screen as per our requirement. Okay, instead of uh, making any uh, changes into standard, whatever we need, accordingly, we can customize it. Okay, that is one thing. And then coming to data accuracy. Data is completely accurate into SAP. Now the question is there, why I have written this point? Are there are chances of data inaccuracy? That's why I have written. No, it's not like that. Question is there, that is when we compare this software to other softwares, then you will find the chances of data is much more accurate into SAP than others. Now again, it makes many other questions that uh, then something we are saying, okay, other softwares are not good at all. Why? Because there, there is a data inaccuracy. Yeah. No, this is not like that. I'm not saying that. Definitely there also data would be accurate. Then only they are accepted. Otherwise they'll be out of market. Then what is the, what is the question over here? So question is there that for that we have to uh, go much more in depth, much more technical. I'll just tell, I will ask you people one thing. Suppose you would have heard name of tally, right? Tally is for what? There's a counting package, right? Yes. Okay. And suppose Sumitra, you you have used banking software, right? Yeah. Okay. And uh, then few more example I will take. 
suppose C, uh, C or C++ is there. This is for programming and coding. Yes. Okay. Or suppose this software called PeopleSoft is for HR only, human resource. So mm -hmm. what I'm trying to say that the, I mean, there are many softwares, but they are for individual functionalities only. Okay. Now suppose we have opened a company XYZ Limited. This is into manufacturing. It is having accounting department also. It is having human resource also. It is having inventory also. It is having, a, it, it deals with her banking transactions as well because if any bigger company we are opening, obviously we need couple of bank accounts also. Not necessarily only one bank account, we can go for multiple also. It depends upon requirement, okay? Mm -hmm. So we need banking also. And uh, uh, we, we need even credit management as well, okay? We need sales and purchase also. I mean, some uh, at least, uh, let us say 10 to 12 departments we are having with different, different areas. Now my question is there, in that case, which software is recommended? Can we say that only tally is recommended? Can tally fulfill entire requirement of our organization? Answer is no. Can we go for banking software? Will it be helpful over here when we talk about sales and purchase? When we talk about the inventory management related to raw materials, related to production, related to planning, will it? become helpful for us? Answer is no. Can we go for PeopleSoft, which is only for HR? No, again, answer is no. HR, I mean, uh, that software also cannot complete entire requirement. So in that case, only one thing we can do that we have to go for multiple software then. Okay, at least a combination of five to seven softwares we need to have to fulfill our requirement. Till here, is it clear? Yeah. Okay. Now the challenge will come if you'll go for five to seven softwares. You know where the challenge will come? Challenge will be coming because those, those, all those would be running independently. Okay. Now suppose you are sitting in German. Okay. Somebody is into Malaysia. Someone is into India. Suppose in German, uh, your sales team is there sitting in German. Okay, they are selling, uh, suppose you are, we are having manufacturing industry. Let us say we are into car business. Okay, we are, we manufacture car. Okay, our sales you know, is happening into German. Production is happening into Malaysia. Okay. And planning and HR activities are happening in India. Okay, we are having business in three countries. Mm -hmm. Or suppose we will include USA also. Okay, all the accounting team is sitting into USA. Now, in German, okay, you have sold 10 cars today. Now, obviously, they'll be paying also, customers will be paying. Amount has come to accounting department. And suppose your engine is sitting in USA, in California. She is handling accounting, you know, uh, whole accounting team. She had is there, she has realized that okay, some you know this much amount came now in the account. Now question is there for her, how she will get to know from which customer it is coming, against which product it is coming, how much profit margin is there, how much discount was there, how much tax has been cal uh, calculated, customers are there from which place. This kind of questions would be as uh, just you know, uh, unanswered for her, right, then she has to. She has to contact it to you, Sumitra, who is sitting in German. Now you think and tell me, whole the day, including spare parts or including cars, multiple items you are selling. Mm -hmm. Okay. Suppose in a day, 500 cars you have sold to 500, 500 different customers, including spare parts. Okay. Maybe it is more than that. So this means how many times is going to call you? Now you think that, okay, this is only one example. Like this in the in the organization, multiple uh, challenges should be there on daily basis. Mm -hmm. Okay, so in that in that case, organization cannot grow up. Okay, so what is solution for that? Solution is there. 
the example whatever we have taken of the multiple you know combination of five to seven softwares all would be interconnected through interfaces okay or we can say middleware or simply we can say okay all would be connected okay so when they will be connected yes obviously the information will be passed automatically okay now when we say okay till here information will be passing i mean the data flow will be happening automatically there's no problem there won't be any face any issue into that so where the problem is going to come see problem is there now just imagine out of in the combination of five to seven softwares if tomorrow one server is down then your entire chain would be broken it will be giving multiple wrong informations wrong information in the sense that whatever business you have done that is not getting recorded suppose in the bank uh, so certain amount has come but there is no information from where it is coming it's not getting updated in your system okay so to rectify that obviously you have to put a lot of money a lot of you know resources a lot of number of hours into that obviously it will be resulted into you know extra expenses which client doesn't like okay being as a business owner even we cannot like as i have taken example that suppose okay we are having a business of you know business and we have opened xyz company limited so if we are running that company definitely will not like that then what is the best option now coming to sap what sap says sap says okay no need to go for multiple software being as a single system being as a single software we are going to fulfill all your requirements even if you are having multiple areas multiple type of businesses multiple type of tasks or processes even we are going to take care of your entire things being as a single system mm -hmm. got it is that clear yeah so in sap what happens all the areas are already integrated no need to put extra effort or extra money okay this is for interconnecting of multiple servers not like that in sap itself this is multiple areas are there which are interconnected to each other either crm is there or sales is there or uh, uh, you know metal management production planning finance uh, costing plant and maintenance human resource all the technical modules project and system everything is interconnected into this okay just i will take one example out of software out this is something out of the topic just let it to you know uh, business only but it is out, out out of topic if suppose, suppose if somebody will ask you okay let us you are having you know uh, uh, you want to purchase today 20 items okay maybe some mistress in the item some you know uh, uh, you know, groceries or uh, some you know electronic items suppose 20 items you want to purchase today there are two options in front of you one is you need to visit 20 shops for 20 different places to purchase the items and that option is there there is a shopping complex where all the items are available in the same building now you think and tell me which one will you choose shopping complex or 20 different shops to 20 different places obviously you will be shopping you will be choosing shopping complex right right where we can get all the items we can save our time yeah and even we can save our traveling expenses as well okay so when we talk about the see in individual life okay sometimes we don't calculate all this but when we talk about the organization at the company level if each and everything would be calculated mm -hmm. yeah got it so i hope it is clear now about the data accuracy yeah, yes yeah okay then coming to data storage so data storage in the sense that uh, I mean, why why this point is important? So first, I will tell you that SAP is very good in terms of data storage. It stores a huge amount of data. Okay, and even not only now because nowadays cloud system is there. So the moment when we talk about the cloud, obviously, uh, uh, you know, any amount of data we can store it, and without hampering the speed of our system, 
uh, you know, it will be working and we can continue our job, our day-to-day -day activities smoothly without any issue. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But the cloud, cloud concept came when? Maybe 10 years back, 12 years back, right? But businesses are going on since beginning only, since long back. Okay. So how they were doing? Obviously, in beginning, maybe they were struggling also. Obviously, you know, when the uh, required facilities are not available, obviously, anyone will struggle. Okay. But uh, at least uh, uh, there are a couple of softwares, not only SAP, but including other softwares as well. So they are very good in terms of database. Okay. And SAP is one of them. So it stores a huge amount of data inside it. Just I will tell, I'll give you a small example. Okay. What the challenges will come. Take, for example, in your uh, laptop, mm -hmm. uh, you are you are having one TB space, okay, one terabyte space. You are having in your desk, in your in your hard disk. Just imagine when it is filled up, then what you are going to do? Max to max, you you could put some external hard disk, and just imagine that also is getting filled up. It will be big headache for you when you are trying to save a single page in your system and it says that okay space is not available it cannot be saved now you think what will happen the what situation will happen why i'm trying to make you that kind of feeling because just imagine that uh, for big big companies let us take one example of a mobile company okay i mean uh, this is a cell phone those who are selling the multiple type of plans multiple type of data internet or cell phones okay chips etc or sim cards so the moment when we are talking may meanwhile maybe multiple customers are purchasing from multiple places okay so what what, what i'm trying to say what does it mean meaning is that whenever any transaction is happening as you know that uh it will take some space because from server bill would be generated receipt would be generated Okay, and payment detail also to be maintained. Okay. So maybe in a day itself, it is going to take a couple of GBs, couple of GB, okay, gigabyte data. It is going in a day, and maybe you know some uh, one or two terabyte data can be used within a couple of days only. Then it will be very difficult for a company to run the business if that is the case. That is why they are worried more i mean they are they are having more and more concern about the database as well the software who is best in terms of storing the data they need that kind of software mm -hmm. is it clear yeah coming to connectivity so connectivity is nothing but you know this is how can we uh daily basis this is how we are connecting means from any place from anywhere uh sitting from our home as well we can get the connectivity okay and this is the best uh, you know uh, quality of you know it and uh, yeah coming to back to you sumitra uh, in banking maybe you know that much facility is not available or if it is there also parcel it is there because bank will not be giving the option to you to log in from your home itself yeah right. okay but in sap yes this is there mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm I'm telling you, uh, Sumitra. But uh, see, when uh, when uh, this COVID started, mm -hmm. still many employees from the starting of COVID from that time to till now, they have not visited their office. Mm -hmm. Are visited also just a couple of times only for any if any important meeting is there or something, then only they have visited. Otherwise, still they are happy to work from home itself. Yeah. Okay. And without without any challenges, without any disturbance, and even in many companies, even still hybrid uh, option is going on. Okay, in hybrid work, what they are doing? Just two days they will go in office, and three days they will be working from home. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So these are the benefits of SAP. These are the benefits of softwares. Okay. Now coming to next point, integration. So integration, just sometimes back, I told you people that all the areas are integrated are linked into sap okay already so uh, as a result there is no problem in terms of data flow okay data flow is like that that suppose now you are doing uh, doing the billing it will be updated into accounting document i mean in accounting department automatically that uh, how much billing has been done for which product it has been done 
So the tomorrow when the payment is coming at the time, uh, everything would be updated into accounting, you know, uh, uh, department in such a way that they will not worry about any information, any extra information because already the data is available with them. The moment when the billing is done into sales and distribution, mean, I mean, uh, at the same time, it is updated already into accounting team as well or into financial accounting as well. Yeah. So this is the benefit of data flow. Okay. Then coming to innovation. So innovation is something related to business from business point of view, how SAP uh, you know, is doing the innovative activities to uh, sustain into market or you could say to you know uh, work as a you know, progressive partner into market. So this uh, they are doing this right from beginning itself. So their innovation point is in such a way that suppose if something, some requirement is going to come in market after two years, then from today itself, they will start doing you know development of that particular software or in that particular area okay, of the business. So the moment when, is, when a client is having a requirement at that time, their product is ready. Okay. So this is one of the best way uh, to survive into market okay, or you know, to sustain their business in the market for a long time. And that is the reason that uh, right from beginning, you know, always there's a growth. Okay. Day by day, they are growing up and almost it is more than uh, I can say more than five decades because they have started somewhere 1972 and I now we are having into 2024. Yeah, it is more than five decades, more than 50 years. So continuously there's a growth. Okay. And even till how many years they'll be there, we don't know. 50 years, 100 years or more than that, no idea. Okay. Because the way how they are grasping the market, okay. So that is very difficult that, okay, some, you know, software can come immediately or recently and, you know, beat them in the market or compete them, you know, in the market in such a way that they can become out of that. It's very difficult. Okay. So then coming to safety and security. So safety and security is just in terms of database. Okay. Because the moment, sometimes back I said, that yes, SAP allows to, you know, in using SAP software, okay, we can work as long as, okay, we want to work from home. Just our organization should permit for that, that's it. So obviously when you are working from home or working from different place, you are not uh, be in the office every time, then definitely data should be secure and it should be safe also, right? Okay. Suppose intensely you are not doing anything, but uh, maybe uh, unfortunately, Okay, uh, there is some fire, there is some flood or some, you know, uh, the laptop has been stolen, then what will happen? Okay, so data can be, you know, uh, leaked, it can be, I mean, some, you know, uh, uh, something wrong can be there with the data, misuse can be there, so answer is no. Because server is not in your laptop, server is at different place, it is client place, okay? So if something wrong happened also, okay, with your machine, then also any problem is not going to happen. Just you need to follow the guidelines of your organization. You need to take precautionary actions. You need to inform your admin team, okay? They can block it, yeah. So this is just a part of safety and security. Then coming to automation. Automation is very common, uh, you know, terminology. Even you people are also knowing. See, automation is nothing but whenever, uh, uh, I mean, so see, there would be a different type of database, which is going to take a lot of time when we are going to do manually. Okay. So the, and, uh, uh, you know, and the challenge would be there of uh, inaccuracy as well. When we are, see, when we are, we are typing something, sometimes, you know, a spelling error can be there. Sometimes when you are entering the amount, any, you know, uh, uh, something can be missed. But when same instructions we are putting into software, yes, uh, it's taking, uh, it's calculating an exact way. All the amounts are coming or all the databases getting you know, uh, saved, okay, uh, in a very secure and safe way, okay. So in uh, automation, there, uh, there will be multiple jobs would be running, multiple programs would be running, and many transactions are taking place automatically, okay. And then coming to 
last point but not the list so sap is in cloud that already we have discussed but cloud in the sense that is it is in terms of database okay data storage okay so multiple amount of database can be stored and uh, it helps to uh, do not you know have any impact in our day to day ongoing business there's no you know uh, uh, effect uh, there's no impact on our uh, system volume of the data or slowness any slowness is not going to happen okay uh, we are maintaining proper speed and you know, we are running in the same way though huge amount of data you know, we are getting stored into cloud yeah so this is just briefly about all these points so any question out of this no so far it's good okay good so mitra from your end any query no, no at present it's clear okay okay all right good so as we discussed in beginning that okay after discussing this you know, scope and benefits then we can proceed discussing with history so history part would won't take too much time okay just let me okay. minutes. because in history uh, you know more explanations are not there Okay, whatever happened time to time, only that much is there. So it can be done within just the two to three minutes. Okay, so first R1 came. Okay, I mean, it was just uh, named as R1. R1 stands for release one. Yeah. And in case if I'm going a bit fast, please let me know. Okay, then I'll be. Mm -hmm. So, but R1 was not successful at all. Very soon it was replaced by R2. R2 stands for two tier architecture. Two tier architecture. What is two tier architecture? There are two layers. What are these two layers? Implementation of them. No. Presentation layer. And next is divided into two parts. Database layer and application layer. Yeah. So we'll discuss about these layers as well in brief. See what is the presentation layer? It allows or it helps user to enter the data into system. It's like the front end. Okay. So it allows a user to enter the data into system as input. And it allows system to modify the data and convert into output. So in short, we can say it is just for data input and output. That's it. Then database layer, what it does? It stores the data. It stores the data. That's why it is called data storage layer. Okay. And then application layer. So what is application layer? It executes the data. What does it mean? Executing a display. It displays the data. Okay. Display the data means, see, there will be multiple reports, okay, which are being generated on daily basis, monthly basis, yearly basis. Definitely, we'd like uh, we'd like to see that how much sales is there. Okay. Or what is the customer data, vendor data, okay, or the product data. Okay. So uh, all these details. Or how much you know this is payment has come okay how much we have paid to our vendors yeah, multiple things are there even balance sheet report here statement report is there so everything we need to display it it has to be displayed even we need, whenever we are going to represent something it is needed so at the time which layer is helping 
that is called application layer. Okay. Now, just in short, we'll understand like this. Suppose we are working into Excel. I'm not comparing SAP to Excel, but just I'm giving example. Suppose we are working into Excel. Okay, we are maintaining some data, some calculations we are doing. Okay, some for, uh, formulas we are putting. That is called input. But the moment once you press enter and you will get the result, that is output. That is done by system. Okay. So this is called here data input and output. Same thing is mentioned over here against presentation layer. Now suppose output is ready. If it is important for us, if it is important for our uh, business, then we'll save it also. I'm mean, still I'm talking into Excel only. I'm not talking about any software now, just MS Excel only I'm talking. So if it is definitely we are we have done some important calculations, we need to save it, right? So the moment once we'll save it, it's going to take some space. Let us say some you know huge amount of data is there. It's going to take uh, some uh, one MB, okay? One MB data is going to take it. Definitely, I mean one MB space is going to take. So obviously it is going to reduce from your hard disk only, right? Okay. So there, which layer is going to work? Database layer. With the help of this layer only, data is getting saved. Otherwise, if no space is there, it is not going to support it. Obviously, our database cannot be saved. Right? Okay. Then, what about application layer? See, suppose you have saved data also. It has been saved into system. But tomorrow, your system is not supporting. Many times, you know, sometimes you people also would have faced the challenges uh, that uh, whenever some software is a bit uh, outdated or it is not updated or windows are not updated okay uh, sometimes it doesn't support sometimes when pdf files we are not able to open in system it says okay it is outdated right so uh, now in that case suppose some functionality is missing from application layer it is not supporting though you have said multiple files in your system but all are crashed just imagine then what will happen okay so this layer uh, takes responsibility okay, and give as a surety that yes, all your data is safe and whenever you want to execute it, you and whenever you want to display it, yes, you can display. Yep. Okay. So these are the functionalities of these three layers. I hope it is clear. Huh. Yeah. So this, uh, yeah, as I told you, R2 stands for Tutor Architecture. So it was uh, I mean, it started somewhere from 1979 and went till 1989. Okay. So as, uh, you know, as per market requirement, definitely they also have upgraded their software from the SAP side as well. So they have converted it into R3 it means it was also replaced in R3 from R2. And that started from 1990 and went until 2024 till beginning of 2024 it was there and this is called three tier architecture three tier architecture what is three tier architecture in three tier architecture there are three layers one is presentation layer second is database layer and third is application layer Okay, means see those layers still remain same. Only the difference is there database and application both were combined in R2. Now both became separated. What is benefit of that? See benefit is that, that uh, instead of running combinedly, when something is running independently, then definitely it can run much more faster compared to combined way. Okay, so uh, this is the, you know, this is the what they found out and they made it independently okay so it was running this is much more smoothly and slowly slowly again they have upgraded their software so major upgrade happened in uh, 2000 sorry i have written here wrongly it is not 2024 it is just 2004 okay so yeah 
in year somewhere in mid of 2004 again it was changed from r3 to mysap from r3 to mysap and component version was ecc 5.0 5.0 was the version even version was there into r3 also when r3 was there so last and latest version of r3 was there it was r3 4.7 even if you we'll type sometimes in google also what is r3 4.7 it will give you complete menu okay so it was the last version see version is nothing but it is just indication of any update something we are updating into document when we used to give okay this is version new version like that okay so yeah so my sap is uh, though my sap uh, it came in 2002 itself but full fledgedly it is started from 2004 okay with a component version ecc and uh, i mean uh, a component was ecc in version 5.0 what is ecc it stands for enterprise central component enterprise central component okay why it is called enterprise central component what does it mean meaning is that they started a uh, whole software or you could say the fashion of their business it started in such a way that instead of giving just a software services to the client they started saying that okay they are you know supporting to client business so giving services to client and supporting to client into their business both are two different things two different terminologies okay so they started working like as a business partner so whenever you are saying somebody okay just i am supporting your business or i want to support you you know you to grow up your, your business definitely client will become much more happy and you'll be getting more and more work from client side and uh, you'll become trustworthy you know a business partner of the client so this is what sap started doing that okay so yeah this ecc and yeah, but technically you know what exactly the difference was there technically when we say between r3 and ecc see in ecc uh, many you know uh, uh, many areas which were uh, uh, having separate server see in r3 also i mean into sap as well in r3 all the functional uh, areas were available in r3 server all the functional areas were available but still techno functional areas were having different server why they were having different server is something that the space was not available yes that's true r3 was not having that much space okay and for crm server for bw means business warehousing etc they still they were having separate server now again the question mark that why it was there when we are saying okay sap is the best software so why they are, they are having different different servers when we are saying okay sap says okay everything is combined in uh, under one you know server itself so reason being is there this is not now it was quite long back okay maybe somewhere uh, around uh, 20 years back 2022 years back because at that time it was not fault of sap in market itself the hardware was not available okay if you we'll talk about uh, 25 years back just imagine that uh, hard disk was having how much space at that time ram was having how much space at that time first of all at that time rarely laptop was available compared to today okay so uh, you know uh, it is just you know lacking of availability of the resources in terms of hardware etc okay so at that time it was not available that's why whatever uh, availability of the you know uh, sources were there in the market they were just updated they were using that only okay tomorrow something more better you know this options are available obviously we can go for or any business can go for that yeah so it depends upon other depending components as well yeah and uh, yeah 
So this 5.0, I mean, this uh, version 5.0 in ECC, it was not for a long time. It just came and went. Mid of 2004, it came, but it was there just till mid of 2005 only. And very soon they have just found, okay, much more better way to work and uh, better options. So they have changed this version to 6.0. Okay, within a year only they upgraded and it became ECC 6.0. Okay, so that 6.0 version, ECC 6.0, it started somewhere 2000, I mean from 2000, ending of 2005 and going on till date. It's going on till date. But if somebody, uh, somebody is asking what is the current version of ECC 6.0? So it is not only our if question is there, what is the current version of ECC? So it is not only ECC 6.0, it is ECC 6.0 with EHP, EHP 7 and even EHP 8 also is going on. EHP stands for? Enhancement package. Enhancement package. I'll tell you what is this. See what happens. This is 6.0. Obviously, it, it is very uh, you know successful uh, uh, version uh, launched by SAP compared to their all other versions. So, but into this also. See, suppose in 2005 it came. Then from 2005 to till now, obviously there are many changes in the market, right? So they have to adapt the changes. Then only they can become successful okay so this esp concept came somewhere uh, around uh, 12 to 13 years back okay this is called enhancement package so whatever uh, updates were there as time to time okay as per market requirement they have added those areas into 6.0 version only okay so whenever you are adding some new point obviously you know to make a difference from older one you have to give some name Okay, so that's why they have st started giving EHP. E First, it was EHP 1, I mean, ECC 6.0, EHP 1, then EHP 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So the latest one is 8, and 7 also many companies still, they are using 7 as well. And uh, along with this, almost uh, since uh, around uh, 12 years back, one concept came called HANA. Okay, HANA database. So from that time itself, SAP started using its own database. Okay. So uh, first of all, HANA started. Then after that, in they started you know uh, using same concept into other areas as well. It became simple finance and simple logistics, and then S4 HANA came in picture somewhere in uh, 2015. Okay. So. Uh, from that time, it's going on. So not only S4 HANA, they launched many other areas as well, like S4 HANA finance is there, S4 HANA logistics is there. Under logistics, there are many areas like material management, production planning, plant and maintenance, quality management. Okay. And uh, then HANA admin is there. HANA admin is nothing but the, sometimes back if you remember, I was talking about the admin module, okay, our admin area, who used to install the server, or take care of the user maintenance, etc. So this is called HANA admin. Okay. In the programming also SAP Fury came. I mean, there are uh, many new components also uh, have been launched since last uh, uh, 12 years to till now. Okay. So this is just in, a, in brief about their history. Now we can just discuss about the modules. Though modules orally I have told many times to you people. Okay, but let us write as well here in brief. There are three types of modules. Module means areas. Technical. Functional and techno functional. Okay. 
technical, functional, and techno functional. So under technical, there are a couple of areas. ABAP is called ABAP. It stands for Advanced Business Application Programming Language. Advanced Business Application Programming Language. Then we have basis. This is completely related to admin module. And then we have XI, PI. This is related to interface. XI is for exchange interface and PI for process interface. And uh, then theory. We have done so. And SAP. Oops. Etc. Now coming to functional. So under functional modules, I are under functional areas. There are many modules. Like FI, financial accounting, CO, controlling. MM, metal management, SD, search and distribution, PP, production planning, PM, plant and maintenance, QM, quality management, PS, project and system, SCM, human capital management. It was earlier HR and after that it was upgraded into SCM. Then RE, real estate, then TM, travel management. WM warehouse management, AWM extended warehouse management, S4 HANA, S4 HANA is there into finance and logistics as well. Coming to techno functional, so under techno functional, also there are a couple of Modules like BI, BW means BI stands for business intelligence or business warehousing, BW for business warehousing. And then HANA, HANA is for database and CRM, etc. Okay, so if you'll observe everywhere I have written, etc. etc. This means these are not only the modules. There are many other modules as well into every area. So SAP is having almost more than 60 modules. Okay. And here somewhere I have mentioned hardly maybe 20, 25 modules. Okay. So obviously there are many more modules as well. That's why I have written, etc. And when uh, uh, I was talking about every basis, I was a bit fast, but you people don't worry. Once we'll start it, okay, we are going to discuss about all these and you'll be getting all the stream details as well. So into that, everything has been mentioned clearly. All the abbreviations are mentioned over there. Yeah, so uh, now coming to uh, uh, topics, which we are, we are going to cover it. So as I told you people already that uh, we'll be including Consultant work also, I mean, completely development work as well, along with testing, along with individual activities also. Okay, so it should not happen that you have learned only one point, but a couple of points you are missing and you are not fit for some job. It should not happen. It's going to, I mean, we are going to discuss one complete package, which includes all your activities, either it is consultant level or it is tester uh, level or it is individual level. Okay complete cycle we are going to do yeah. and uh, now coming to server level so i think now you people would have you know got some good idea okay so what we'll do my, my recommendation is there okay we can go for both okay more and more will be you know being uh, into ecc okay and along with that, parallelly, where we will feel okay, some major changes are there, we'll be including S4 HANA as well. 
So both of the servers should not be unknown for you people. Okay, you should know both the things. Yeah. Now people tell me if any query, any question is there, we can discuss. I mean, how does this code, I mean, uh, for the certification, do we need to write another exam separately from the good SAP? Question. Or... Yeah, good question, Sumitra. So, uh, Sumitra, there are two type of certifications. One is from institute side, okay? Mm -hmm. And one is from SAP side. Okay. SAP yeah. side, yeah, SAP side is that, that is global certification. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. Mm -hmm. Global means everywhere it is recognized. Yes. Mm -hmm. In any part of the world, it is recognized. Okay. Okay. And that gives more uh, benefit. I mean, more benefit and value. more kind of value. Yeah, more kind of value, pride. Okay. Yes. <laughs> you know, persons used to say, yes, I'm certified consultant like that. So when you are saying, okay, yes, I'm certified, definitely some good feeling you are having. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So okay. That, yeah. Is yeah. there any validity for the certificate actually? Because I have read some yeah, life, life, uh, lifetime. Okay, okay. It okay. is lifetime. Because it doesn't. It, uh, Sumitra, it doesn't mean that you know that, that suppose uh, uh, next year or after five years, mm -hmm. let us say some version is getting changed, uh, or suppose R three is now it is not there, right? As I explained mm -hmm. you people, so it's outdated completely. Mm -hmm. Right. But those who had who had done the certification when R three was there, mm -hmm. they are also certified consultant. A lifetime. Okay. 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 See, we are we are talking about SAP certified. We are not talking about ECCS four hundred R three, right? Mm -hmm. That's the point. Yeah. Okay. 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 Yes. And even the uh, first certification also, you don't worry. Uh, I'm telling you many times. No persons used to think, used to think okay, certification maybe it will be a bit hard or how to mm -hmm. qualify it. So uh, I'll, I'll be telling you people, okay, the easiest way how to do it. Okay. okay. And easily in first attempt itself, you could qualify. Okay. There are many this easy way to do that. Because even I can tell you what are the questions they are going to ask. Mm -hmm. Daily even, uh, see, uh, when in our, in our training, daily basis, at least to some, you know, couple of minutes, we are discussing all the questions. Mm -hmm. Okay. But till end okay. of the training, definitely be, you'll be familiar. Okay. Most of the questions. Okay. Okay. And just tell you, this is a uh, uh, you need to score. I think it is just sixty five percent or sixty three only. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. I mean, passing mark is there, just a sixty three. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Is it a multiple choice questions only? Multiple, or yes, yes. multiple choice. Okay. 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 Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. And even not only that, I can give you, you know, this is all the you know question and answers as well. Mm -hmm. not, not exactly but i mean uh, see suppose multiple times of many questions have been repeated it so if you are preparing you are preparing you know some three to four hundred questions definitely mm -hmm. out of that it, you know all the questions will be there because somewhere uh -huh. around i think uh, uh 80 80 questions are there are 180 i don't remember exactly because you know mm -hmm. it is a couple of years you know, back quite long back mm -hmm. so when i did but uh, yes uh yeah, I think at around 80 questions will be there, mm -hmm. if I'm correct. Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay. But that is very easy. Yeah, one thing is that when persons are not, uh, uh, you know, uh, preparing or they are not following the way how to prepare it, then it is difficult. Okay, mm -hmm. many persons are there, it's very hard to them. Mm -hmm. Not able to you know, uh, qualify that. So that mm -hmm. also happens. Mm -hmm. So we need to just to go with, you know, well preparation. That's it. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, yeah. fine. Okay. Yeah, any other query? No. At present, no. Maybe once you share the course details, like uh, um, uh, like about the fee structure and uh, what all things have been included, maybe I will do my research and then I will get back to you guys. Yeah, yeah. The, these things you could discuss with, you know, with Sai itself. Mm, yes. And, yes. Uh, yeah. And uh, see, about the syllabus, I can tell you people right away itself. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Just a second, I'll be showing you the syllabus.
Yeah, see this the syllabus. So everything has been given in completely, you know, in a very structured way, how much time it is going to take in day one, day two, day three wise, you no? Know? Everything has been uh, written over here. These are the topics and all are divided under units, okay? Like uh, introduction, introduction to SAP, introducing SAP, CCS4, HANA, ASAP and SAP activate methodology, SAP theory introduction, server, our system information, overview of business process and financial accounting and controlling process and responsibilities of FICO consultant, okay. process flow, gap analysis, documentation, implementation, training, support. Yeah. And then slowly, slowly, will be doing practicals as well. So from unit okay. four, all the practicals will be started, okay? So here, mm -hmm. everything, everything we are going to do practically, okay? I'll be showing you, uh, you people in the software itself, we'll be configuring all these things practically. So uh, theoretical discussions also will be doing, but everything would be done practically as well. Complete cycle. Okay. Yeah. Like, you know, suppose define company. So define company means, when a company starts, how it works, how the branches would be there, how the business areas would be there, okay, or uh, uh, how uh, you know the business is going on. Suppose credit management is there, credit control area is there, okay, mm -hmm. category is there. All this you know, would be done into this. You could see here credit control area, yeah, business area, function area, maintenance yeah. consolidation business area, and even uh, date also is mentioned. Okay. I mean, day mm -hmm. four, day five, okay, number of hours. Yes. So everything has been mentioned into this in such a way that, uh, uh, you know, definitely we have to follow it and it is something in a written way. It's not like that, okay, uh, you have been told in the beginning, yes, training would be there for, you know, 50 hours or 52 hours. And after mm -hmm. that course is getting completed within 30 days. Mm -hmm. Now, these kind of things will not be there at all because that's why this, uh, the syllabus itself, you know, will not allow to do, you know, any manipulation or something. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See, this is, you know, defined fiscal year means financial year. Okay. Periods, posting period, fiscal year, document type, document number ranges. Okay. And. Okay. Then general ledger. Uh, sometimes back I was talking about this only master data. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. CL accounting and posting this mm -hmm. master data. Yeah. So then cash general. How we used to do our cash transactions in the company. Okay. There would be petty cash account would be there when we are doing all the you know, cash transactions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then account receivable. Configuration testing. Mm -hmm. Down payment and then accounts payable. P two P cycle. P two P means procurement to pay. Mm -hmm. Okay, like in a uh, uh, SD. In, I mean, in account receivable, it is OTC. OTC or sell cycle. We can say OTC means order to cash. When we mm -hmm. talk about the sales order, okay. Mm -hmm. Then uh, after sales order, then delivery would be there. This is called PGI, post goods issue. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then after delivery, then billing would be there. Okay. After billing, payment is there. Okay. I mean, this is the business flow. Okay. Yeah. Similarly, 
in accounts payable p2p cycle is there procurement to pay okay yes. like so purchase order, then goods received invoice verification and then payment okay so this is if somebody asks okay what is the p2p cycle so there is nothing but purchase order to payment mm -hmm. yeah see in uh, for uh, not only for fico uh, i mean not only for fi it is for any business Account receivable and accounts payable, these two are very important topics like backbone of the business. If we'll remove sales and purchase from any business, now just you think then what is left? Mm -hmm. Business cannot run, right? Just okay. imagine, imagine just, you know, remove sales and purchase. Then, you know, just then you think, then you realize that then what would be left? Take example of any business. Okay, either take example of e-commerce or any hotel management, even medical store also. If you take it, without sales, the, the without purchase, they cannot sustain. Okay, not only bigger businesses. I'm not talking about okay, this is uh, you know uh, big big industries or you know, five level companies. Even if you take a small business also, if you sales and purchase, if you remove it. It is very difficult to grow. It's very difficult to sustain, right? Sales comes into sales and distribution. Okay, are in in a five when we talk, it is part of account receivable and purchase comes into accounts payable. Okay, even if we we'll take banking example itself, then also there are many items we are selling. There are many banking products which we are selling. Take uh, either loans or take credit card, debit card, okay, uh, and uh, mutual fund. Many things are there. Mm -hmm. See, whenever we are opening saving account, obviously the account holder will be our customer only, right? Right. Yeah. And even we are getting business from those customers only. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, just I will give a small example of credit card. So, Simitra, since uh, you are having good amount of paying experience, you are the best person who knows about the credit card. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In, cre in credit card, those who are a bit lazy kind of customers, you think bank how much banks are earning through credit yeah. card. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just I'm giving hint only. Now you could realize that what, what I'm trying to say. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you got your point. <laughs> Persons are person. Suppose somebody is having, let us say, two lakh rupees, uh, their amount limit, mm -hmm. and uh, by some reason, okay, they have spent entire their two lakh. And if they are not active customer, mm -hmm. then I'm telling you, not only two lakh, maybe more than four lakh rupees, they are paying just a part of interest and late payments only, and mm -hmm. still their principal amount is sustained. Mm -hmm. So it happens. It happens. Practically, it is happening. I'm telling you. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it is just one of the example. Otherwise, there are multiple type of examples are there. From mm -hmm. loan also, they are getting you know good business. Mm -hmm. So anyway, let us proceed further. Yeah. Then we are having taxation as well. Mm -hmm. TDS we are having this called withholding tax. And then there are many other topics like you know dunning procedure is there. Dunning is nothing but when it is just a part of collection. So when oh. our customer is not making the payment on time, then we, uh, exactly. We have to send a notice and all this. And it goes to legal uh, action as well. Mm -hmm. also, mm -hmm. It goes to legal action also. And then terms of payment. So terms of payment means it, you know, uh, uh, in, in sales, if you see, then we used to say, okay, uh, you know, buy two, get one free. Or suppose whenever we are selling something, we used to say, okay, if you'll, to our like, regular customers, we, we mm -hmm. can give some condition, okay, if you'll pay amount at a time itself, we, we can give you some, uh, so and so discount, okay, or some percent of discount. If you're mm -hmm. delaying that, okay, then your discount will not be there. So these are different, different ways how to collect the payment from customers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then we are having, you know, terms of payment using installment as well. Then, yeah, here, trade management is there, which I was talking sometimes back. Yeah. Okay. Trade management, risk categories all this mm -hmm. and then automatic payment program 
so how uh, how payment is done automatically mm -hmm. see what happens uh, there will be connection okay uh, uh, the connections are set up between bank and companies so right right and like auto debits like ecs mm -hmm. ah exactly yes yes yeah so uh, daily basis a bank will be sending the file to company mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. and uh, once it is into uh, once it is processed into SAP, so whatever open items would be there, if mm -hmm. payment has been done for them, then it will be clearing automatically. Okay, mm -hmm. whatever uh, items are not cleared, next day when bank is going to send the files, if they have done the payment, then it will be cleared like that. Okay. Okay. See all this, you know, you could see here. Everything has been set up like set up for all company codes for payment trans transactions, set up paying company code. These are the settings how to do it. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then you could see here we are having house bank, IBAN. IBAN is nothing but international bank account number. Mm -hmm. So not only, you know, uh, I mean, it is not only for one country. Even the, right. uh, in IBAN, if you, uh, I, I am not sure whether the people have come across or not, but this is used uh, more and more, it is used for European countries. Mm, right. Yeah. Mm. And uh, then automatic payment program using different payment methods. Mm. Different payment method means using check payment, okay, or using bank transfer. There are multiple type of payment methods are there. Okay. So those things also will be doing. <clears throat> and then yeah, the testing, payment run, check payment, spool request, payment file generation with DME engine mapping dm is nothing but data medium exchange so these things we'll discuss separately and then we are having asset accounting mm -hmm. configuration testing so everything has been explained over here like uh, what is the depreciation type uh, methods of the depreciation okay mm -hmm. our type of assets okay our uh, you know how can we classify different different type of assets then uh, how can we do the retirement how depreciation is going to be calculated yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, then uh, uh, how to acquire the asset, how to add the value, you know, this is, our, I mean, in other words, we can say how to capitalize the asset. So mm -hmm. suppose some asset we have capitalized today, after two months when we are selling it, then how did depreciation is getting calculated for two months and remaining it, it will be posted. So, and uh, how accumulated depreciation getting transferred to depreciation at the end of the year, or how to close the periods when we are doing, you know, this is a depreciation run. So all these things we are going to discuss over here. Okay. Yeah. And then controlling module, casting. Mm -hmm. okay. So we are going to discuss like you know, cost limit accounting, okay, cost limit groups, cost limits, primary, secondary. And then we have, you know, this is cost, uh, cost centers, where cost is getting calculated. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Posting our planned values, okay. And then uh, posting the actuals. Then we are will be comparing. Okay, this is how much plant value was there, and when actual is getting calculated, how much difference is there? It's just you know like budgeting, yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, then we are having internal errors. So under internal error, especially we are we used to calculate overhead cost and revenues. So those things also will be covered. Then we are having profit center accounting. So in profit center accounting, okay, till at least till creation of profit centers, we'll be doing. And then we are having information system. So it is for reporting only. Okay. What type of reports? Like general ledger account, account receivable, accounts payable, asset accounting, balance sheet, profit and loss accounts. Yeah. And then we have data migration, LSM depot. How to migrate the data. Even uh, this is, uh, we are having one app also, this migrate your data nowadays, well as uh, LSMW also is there in ECC. And then yeah, these are th theoretical things like you know, guidelines for the support project, day -to -day. what are your day-to-day -day activities are there, how you are going to resolve the issues or you know, tickets, or um, uh, what would be the uh, you know, tools into support project. Yeah, so those things also we are going to discuss. And then, FIMM integration. Okay, so all these we are going to do practically, like you know, uh, purchase order, MIGO means goods received, invoice verification, okay. like how to create the plant, purchase order, material master, assignment, 
Okay. So all these things we are going to do. I mean, complete uh, uh, a whole cycle to be doing, uh, doing how data comes from MM to FI, okay, how payment is done. So those things will be taken care into FI and MM integration. And then similarly, FI and SD integration. So here all the estate, uh, all the activities we are going to do into sales and distribution as well, like inquiry, quotation, sales order, and then uh, delivery, then billing. And after billing, data will come automatically into FI. And from FI, the payment would be done. Mm -hmm. yeah. So all this we are going to take care of that. Okay. Yeah. Now I hope you people understood the syllabus as well. Yes, yes. Yes. Discussed? Yeah. So now you could tell me if any query is there or if something is left uh, still, you know, you want to discuss, you want to get clarity. Not present. I don't Not. have anything. Maybe I'm I may need a little time to make the decision. So I will be in touch with Sai. Mm. Yeah, sure. And uh, those, those things you could discuss with Sai only. Yes, my, my part is there, okay, to just to explain all these things and <laughs> answer to you for any technical questions. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah, thanks a lot. Yeah. Thanks, uh, indeed. So, hope you don't have any questions now? No. Okay. Uh, that related to, you know, you know other, other functional things I'll discuss, yeah. No problem. Yeah, okay. Uh, thank, thank you. you. So thank you so much. Thank you. you. Thanks a lot. Thanks. Okay, so Sai, I'll be disconnecting now. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Bye.